we are back here at the top of the second inning, leading off here. Or the Panthers. Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Batting here is number 17, Josh Stanton. One of the better hitters here for Colleyville. Sporting a 293 batting average here. And he beans another one. Second of my pitch here for the game. And number 17, Josh Stanton gets on first. That one seemed a lot nicer than the other one. And the one came in pretty... I don't know if they're wearing shin guards, but that would have bounced right off a shin guard. Regardless, it will probably still leave a mark. Fires first pitch in for a strike. Number six, Sean Ferris. The Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Ferris rips one foul for strike number two. Nobody out runner at first here. Finds the sign he likes, goes in for the 0-2 pitch. Grounds with a weekly, oh, but it bounces right out of the glove of the shortstop out into the, in the outfield. We get to see if that's being charged as an error here or if it will be a, uh... it was a very playable ball there. I believe it probably will be charged as the error on the shortstop. Oh, the bunt! And the bunt will advance the runners. You don't see a good bunt anymore. Good coaching will tell them to bunt. Now we have two runners in scoring position. You gotta know your role on this, like The Rock says. You gotta know your role. And sometimes your role is bunt. Advancing the runners, getting where you need them to be. And a very well placed bunt as well. Brady Fitzgerald at the bat. Golf's one right to the, and he goes to the throw at home. And another hit will score our first run of the game for Colleyville Heritage. First run has come across one out here. Ooh, one sails really inside. Battery able to get out of the way. Takes ball one. Isaac Phelan, the pitcher, is working it out. He's figuring it. He's getting strikes, even on the count of 1-1. One, one. Number 
it out through there. And he's ruled safe. That will be ruled a hit. Sharks up Hogan Shelby. Struggling to come up with the key plays here. One of the most difficult positions to play in baseball. Getting that ball short to first base is incredibly difficult. You not only have to receive, but you have to deliver to first. Two men on. One out here in the top. So I guess another run has scored. Find the strike zone, gets him a strike. Pulling it over there. Myers went outside for ball one, even to the count one and one. Myers another one outside for ball and the two. You're kind of your two and one. Wind up and finds it. It's her count two and two. It's just angling it, certainly trying to make sure he can he can find that strike zone. He's got to control that fastball. Really get it. Got to pound that zone. And he gets the strikeout. Strikes him out looking. Worked his way out of a jam in there. To get that strikeout. As our second out of the inning. Rudder's still on first and second base. Here for number 25. Takes the outside for ball number two here. The right handed pitcher, Isaac Phelan. Really taking his time having those conversations with your catcher. Oh, and goes sailing outside, brings her count of 3 0. Oh. A walk here and load the bases. Hitters count 3 0. If you get him to ground out, it's your best scenario. But he takes. Oh! Takes it for strike number one. About the same spot he's been throwing it previously, but that one was called for a strike. Golf swung into the hole. There's good to play. And safe. A runner will score on a single to left field by number 25. Tell the hitter had the green light there. Swing it away and swing it did. That will cause meeting on the mound. Hard position to be as a coach because you've got to go out there and say, "Hey, you know what's going on here, and you see what you're doing, but do better." Right. 
Honestly, the pitcher's defense has not done him any favor so far this game. But everyone getting set here, pulling it all back together. Looking to find his groove here. Make sure to. Doesn't want to disappoint the quite packed crowd here at this Birdville Stadium. Golf's one right into left field. Two will score. Four. Another two more will score for Colleyville. We are score 5 0. Beautifully hit ball right where nobody was. The hitting coach, you're going to pat that boy on the back when he comes back. That he did a great job of patience. But the guys feel able to find his way back through here. Gulls won the foul. Nice little sound effect plays. I gotta, gotta enjoy that. It's the little touches. Gonna come to enjoy. We were still in the top. Golf's it foul again. Another beautiful sound effect. Gotta love that. The pitcher failed in fighting back here. Brings our count 0-2 on the batter there. Runner on second base. Five runs already this evening. Can they play another one across? And he'll golf another. There comes the play at the plate. And it bounces off the catcher. And that will leg it out oh, for a double. Looks at third, but comes back to second. Another double, play another run, bringing our total to 6 0 here in the top of the second inning. Catcher, you're definitely going to talk to your pitcher on the mound here. Need to make sure you can figure out what's going on here. What are we, uh, what are we doing? Are there sign problems or? the last weekend of in-district play here. 5A Texas Boys Baseball. Even a loss here, Birdville will still be in first place in the division, making the playoffs here. Another call back to the mound here. Coach looks to take, the, and then takes the baseball. One and two thirds in here, Rising Palin here, bringing in another pitcher. Bring in a substitute pitcher here. You hate to see it for young pitcher's confidence, but. Looks like number 20, Cameron Ward, is coming into the game here for Birdville. We're 
we're looking to stem the bleeding, of course. Um, going to get this time. And once, he, once player returns, we will come back. You're listening to your Birdville Boys Baseball Vibe Media Network. All right, plays returning here in North Lichen Hills for Birdville boys. We have a new pitcher here, Cameron Ward. It's number 17 here, Josh Statton. The fires went inside. As a pitcher, you do get the chance to warm up a little bit. And it can certainly be hard if you're not intending to give this game as early. Any pitcher, doesn't matter how good you are, coming into a game this early not expecting to do it is, cert is no easy task whatsoever. As he takes two balls, his first two pitches here. Fouls went off. Pitch, Breer counted two and one here. Cameron Ward, the, the new pitcher. You really have to find your groove and really trying to, to get in this swing of things. Pitchers are creatures of habit. And a beautiful snag out of the air. And we'll end the inning. A lot of damage comes through, but the new pitcher, Cameron Ward, is able to, to, to pull it together after a beautiful snagging catch out of the air. Brings us to the bottom of the second inning. Colleyville Heritage, six. Birdville Hawks, zero. All right, and we're back here at the bottom of the second inning here. Grant Pert, batter here for the Birdville Hawks. First pitch taken foul, ripped over 
the Birdville dugout. I was said this before, but there is a lot of space here between the dugouts and the batting line. And he fires the second pitch for a strike. Takes one looking. Rips third pitch foul, keeping the at bat alive. 0 oh 2 for number 23. Grant Pert. Here's the wind up of the pitch. Take it for a strikeout. It looked quite outside to me as well, but that will call it a called strike three. Grant Pert. I can absolutely understand the frustration there. That looked quite a bit outside, but we would be to argue with the umpire here, but that is our first out of the inning. It's a strikeout. Swing, strike, strike number one here. By number six, Bina Martinez. Takes a second strike, strike number two here. It can certainly be hard as our pitcher had to be, had to be sitting down for right a bit for the inning. It was quite a long half an inning there. So. Takes a swinging strike for strike number three. Our pitcher, Cooper Powell, dealing here, in one and a third. Very out show of oh, 18. You go, I on you. Let's hit a batter up to plate here. It's Cooper Powell. And the ball goes sailing. Nico go to, to slide right into his second base. On a throwing error, Birdville has their first base run of the game. That brings the number 22, Aiden Freeman here. Up to bat. The runner in scoring position. Can he manage to put the damage on Cooper Powell, the left-handed pitcher, Colleyville Heritage. Pitch. First pitch, swinging strike. Strike number one. That was got quite a few of those swinging strikes here. Really fooling those battlers with the movement on that fastball. Throwing it in that zone. That will be golfed deep left field. And that will score the runner. A double will score Birdville's first run of the game. Two out double. Aiden Freeman. 
the score, Nico. And the Hawks are on the board. Still two outs with a runner on second. Can they do it again? Pitch. A weak crowder out to the second baseman. Fires the first and gets there in time to end the inning. That'll be it for the second inning. Both teams play runs, but a little, a little bit more for Colleyville Heritage. Our score stands at six. Our Colleyville, one for Burville. You're, you're watching Burville Boys Baseball on the Bike Media Network. And we're back here, oh, and uh, North Richard Hills for Burville Boys Hawks Baseball. Cameron Ward has returned on the mound here. He'll face for the first time. Number six, Sean Ferris, first time. As he takes, falls off. Our, our count here is at one and one. He falls one back into the nets. Always nice to have safety nets. You don't want balls flying in your face. Safety nets are a good thing. The temperature is wonderful, but the wind is kicking in through here as he fires. Just high, even our count up to two and two. But the weather here is absolutely phenomenal. Though the wind is really kicking. Here's the two pitch. Fires it outside low. For a full count here. On the batter, Sean Ferris. Pitch. And he gets him swinging for a strikeout. First strike of the game for Cameron Ward, our new pitcher here. It's our first out of the inning. We have number seven, Weston Ballard. Towards us. You can only imagine how the ball is moving in this <laughs> wind. Fires that one to a strike, even the count. A one and one. One out, one ball, one strike. I was uh, way outside, right off the plate, for ball number two. Ready, 
Gets the swing in. Strike number two. He leads their count at 2 2. Batter Weston Ballard for Colleyville Heritage. And gets the swing in for his second strikeout. Two up, two down for the pitcher. Feels like Cameron Ward, the pitcher, starting to find his groove, finding what works, what doesn't. But he fires one outside for ball one. Absolutely cannot be easy pitching in this crazy wind. As he fires another one outside for ball two. And looks at the catcher, finds a sign. Fires that one in for a strike. And carry out two and one. This pitch he likes fires way outside. Three and one. From seeing his pitches, you would have to think the batter here was not going to swing on that fourth pitch, and he was not, and he was right. Takes ball number four to give him a base runner on first. Number three, Cash Lyle, up to bat here for Colleyville. We've certainly seen him up to bat previously. Got a, a double at his first at bat. Waits one right to the second baseman, fires the first on time, and that will end the inning. One walk, two strikeouts, and a ground out will be the tail for this half inning. We return to the bottom of the second, bottom of the third, for the Burville Hawks trailing Colville Heritage Panthers six to one. You're watching Burville Boys Baseball on the Vite Media Network. And we are back here at the bottom of the third inning. Alex Walter, the batter up here, for takes one out. 
inside for strike one. Cooper Powell still at the game dealing. Fires went outside for ball one. Fouls went outside. Breaks are cut here to one and two. Fires one high and foul. Two pitch here. Cooper Powell golfs it in the air and caught by the right fielder. Matter here. Roberto Cody Shelby. Hogan Shelby. Rips foul way backwards. No more glass sound effect here, but did appreciate it. Things well, these are count one and one with the one out, triple ones here. The pitch. Grounds it foul. Right at the first baseline. Had the right ideal on it. But just couldn't keep it fair. Freeze are going to one and two. Number 70, Hogan, Shelby. Here's the pitch. Fires it high. Even our count up at two and two. Good discipline for the young batter. Laying off on that. Golf's another one. Foul. Here he goes there. Pitch. Cups it up. Oh, just foul. Ooh, it was close. It was it was marching towards that back, but it definitely found its target eventually. Good heads up play from the defense, not touching that ball. It'd be so tempting to go for it. But you just gotta let it roll. And they did, and it hit its target. And the ball goes fell out of his hands for Cooper Powell. Here's 
Here's the pitch. Lines another one a foul. Now these balls are very, very close to being in play, but they're just rolling down that first base line. He's keeping it up at, up, up at bat alive. It's our cowgirls full three and two. One out here. Bottom of the third inning. Here's their 3-2 pitch. And he takes ball four. Have to keep that bat, bat, bat alive. Ben Brooks up the bat here. Shows bunt, but takes it as a ball. A one out sack bunt is certainly if you can't hit it. But that one gets launched upwards and it will fall for a base hit. A single by number one Ben Brooks. Well, two bet runners on first and second, one out. For Will Bush. Will Bush currently, the left hand batter is Listen to the best hitting in, of the team. Exactly who you want in this situation here. A very strange batting stance here. Looks steel, but takes ball one. Very kind of a lead there at second. Time's called by the umpire. It was really itching to steal that third base. Checks in at second base. Good signaling there by the defense, making sure to keep track. You never want to give them too much leeway. You also want to make sure you're playing your position as well. All it takes is one defensive miscue for bad things to happen. Takes ball two outside and, and low there. A lot of better Will Bush for Birdville. Runner starting at second. Cooper Powell does not want to pitch to Will Bush. Walk here with load the bases here for Birdville. It is the hitter's count here. And he takes a strike. Found the zone on that pitch.
Oh, he takes strike two. What or full count here on the better Will Bush. Cooper Powell fighting back from that early 3-0. Fighting back, still see. Checks in on second base there. Fouls went back. Can't think about it. I looked like it was going to be out, but there was there was quite a bit of movement on that. Enough for the batter Will Bush to chase on it and get a foul. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Brown's another one foul. Keeping that bat alive and uh, figuring out. Line drive right up the middle for one. And we'll get, runs will come through. Fires the third. And an offensive miscue will allow runners to advance the third base. Seem to be some confusion here whether Bottle was dead or not. They are call it save. Another run will come back. I'm not entirely sure what happened on that play, but. I would have thought he would have tagged out the runner at second. Because he touched the base and then fired to first. Even though the fire the there should be at least one out here. But they were the Because the Second base did tag the second base back to throw to first, but they're having a nice chat about it, making sure they figure out what's wrong, how no one got out there, but the throw to first was offline, which allowed more runners to score through there. And we do have a runners on second and third with one out here in the bottom of the third. Goes sailing outside. <laughs> Fires that one inside for a strike. Either a count up at one and one. And that will be two outs. Fired right. The runner at third went to run, but they got him. Gunned him down. As a base running error will cause the inning to end. But one more comes across here for Birdville. Make her score 6-2 after three. You're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Vite Media Network.
All right, and we are back here, top of the fourth inning. Caleb Ward still in the game for Birdville. This case is Brock Zimmer. Takes a swinging foul strike. Corrales went out to the shortstop, but the shortstop fumbles again, and will have a base hit. It could have been a normal, routine defensive play of the shortstop. Comes up being bobbled. Pitch. Once again, ground the shortstop. Once uh, for one. <laughs> and he fires the second and gets the out on a fielder's choice. Oh, no out. It called safe. That'll be two on here. It was ruled safe. It was not ruled out. Launches one high. Could he get there? And that ball is out of here. Oh, it's not. It stays in, but here comes the play at home. And he gets the tag at a home plate. Gets the runner. One will come across. But a beautiful throw to a ball that was all, looked to be out of here makes the play at home. What an amazing relay out from the center fielder. Quite the amazing play there by the center fielder getting that runner at home plate. Fires one low and for ball one. Fouls one back. Goes sailing over our heads. Negatively protected by the net. Fires with low and away for ball two. Rear count two and one. One out here. Runner on second. There's one line deep in right field. Center fielder is there. Here comes the play at the plate. Can he get there in time? And it gets there for one. But he gets out. Tried to lay out a double, but uh, couldn't quite turn the double, but a run is scored. Across the plate. Bringer scored at 8-2. It was a good attempt on the, on the on the run to second, but a fantastic throw by the Birdville catcher was able to get it on time. It also makes us have two outs with nobody on. Would have been a normal single. Scary swinging strike there. Oh, 
Uh, bat here, number 17, Josh Statton, looking to uh, get on base. Takes up it outside, evens our count here at two and two. Staten lines one. And it is foul, but good effort there by the left fielder. Almost got there for the catch that foul. Covered a lot of grass pretty quickly for a lazy fly foul. That's what this wind is doing here. It's really uh, causing the ball to go all, all over the place. Fouls went back. Go sailing over our heads onto the freeway. Hope it didn't dent someone's windshield because I saw it quite bounce off the road. Pops one up. Defense is there to make the catch. And they make it. For the third out of the inning. That will bring us to the bottom of the fourth inning. Panthers managed to play two more. Can the Birdville Boys answer? You're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Vite Media Network. And we're back here at Halton City. Burville Boys Baseball. Bottom of the fourth inning. Biden Martinez up to play here for the Hawks. Will you get on base once again? As Guru Powell fires one outside for ball number one. Fires another one outside for ball number two. I have to imagine some a little bit of fatigue is starting to set in the fourth inning here for the young pitcher. That was the best of us. But he gets him swinging for a strike. Puts our count at two and one. Most people don't understand how much fatigue the ring of baseball that many times puts on a body. Especially a young high school player, even though I think they're invincible. As he gets them swinging there, he was count up to two and two. Time is called at the plate by the umpire.
2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Cooper Powell. Gets one on the ground here, but the shortstop unable to pick it up, and that will be a base hit for Nico Ayanu. Gets on base there. On an error by the shortstop. Starting to see a little bit of life out of this Burville boys offense. Cooper Powell has done an amazing job here through four, keeping the damage down. As he fires in for a first pitch strike on Aiden Freeman. Here's the pitch. Lines one foul. And it's just shy of the road. Brings the count and Freeman to 0 oh 2. Looking to race that run that runner he has on first base. And gets him swinging for a third strike. Is a fifth strikeout for Cooper Powell. Done a remarkable job keeping them, keeping them guessing, keeping them swinging. Fires one low and inside for ball one. Looks like it just slipped out of his hands at this delivery. And it goes flying. And it bounced over the road into another parking lot. Some will going home with a souvenir baseball in the parking lot when we get out there after the game. One one pitch. Browns went to the shortstop. Unable to come up with it. And that will be another base hit. Two outs here, but two two men on for the Burnsville Hawks. Every out shoulder over the back for the buck for the Hawks. Fires one inside for ball number one. Firing outside. Ball number two. Diametric places. One was high and outside, the other was low and inside. So he's certainly experimenting here, seeing what the, the batter showalter will chase on. Or if he'll chase it all, which he hasn't so far, so. There's hit. And a diving drop will get there, and that will end the inning. A diving catch by the left fielder. And that being through four, 
call the Heritage Panthers eight, Hawks two. You're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Mike Media Network. All right, and we're back here. The top of the fifth inning here, Birdville. Ward still on the mound here for Birdville. And it's one of the most hollow things in baseball. We do have a no-hitter watch in Queens right now, as the Mets currently no-hitting no the Phillies through seven. As he takes ball one, takes strike one here. Be the most exciting no hitter we've seen. I don't know if you can call a combined no hitter a no hitter as we see one go flying in the, into the stands. It's one and two. But they call it a combined no hitter because pitchers uh, Tyler Meagle, uh, Smith, and Rodriguez, and Drew Smith. This one is a chopper out to the second baseman. Fires to first. In time to get the out. First out of the inning. My uh, beloved Toronto Blue Jays are currently losing 10-5 to Houston Astros in Toronto. That's a three-run home run by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Couldn't help out. That's a three-run home run by Jeremy Pena. Young Astros new as shortstop. He takes it high for ball one. Other things running these. The Miami Marlins beat the Seattle Mariners 8-6. As he launches one into the air. Right, the center fielder for an easy second out. Two outs here for in the top of the fifth inning. Caleb Ward starting to really find his rhythm here. Of course, only giving up two runs the last inning. <sighs> it's always a scary feeling when you see a baseball flying towards you. I go, my hand moves upwards, my, my instincts kick in. But thankfully, safety netting means I did not need a mitt. A mitt. I go full fight or flight. O2 pitch to the batter here. And take it outside for ball one. Lines one right to the center fielder, makes the catch. And that will end the inning. A nice, clean, one, two, three inning. 
for Birdville. As they bring up the bottom, we go to the bottom of the fifth here. Birdville still trailing 8-2. You're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Vite Media Network. And we're back here, Birdville High School. Josh Statton, leading off batter here for Birdville, shows a bunt, fouls off the bunt there. Very interesting strategy, bunting with nobody on. Bunting a hit, is, is, they'll never expect it. Goes to the pitch. Fouls one away over the dugout. But around the MLB right now, we do see Padres routed the Pirates 7 9. As he takes a line drive out the center field, the center fielder is there to make the catch. First out of the inning. Red Sox for they leave the Orioles three to one. The bottom of the ninth. Rays routed the Ale Central current leaders, the Twins, six to one. We still have a no hitter watch through seven there in Queens for the Mets. Better here it comes up. Takes it inside, ball one. Sit. Braves are currently beating the Texas Rangers. Five to one. As he lines one high. Will there be somebody to get there? And the left fielder is there for the second out. A lot of power, but a very light contact. Getting these batters to fly out. It's a dangerous game you play as a, as a pitcher. Two outs. That one was loaded away from ball one.
7 Will Bush. And the shortstop is there to make the catch for the third out. One, two, three innings. For the, the Hawks go down in order as we go to the top of the sixth inning. You're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Vite Media Network. We are back here at Burville High School. Top of the sixth inning here. Number three, Cash Lyle. Takes one outside for ball one. Oh, a small tapper. Fires back to first. And a collision at first base will allow the runner to get there. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. The throw was online, but was able to, to block the first base before he could get the ball. Another pinch runner will come in here for Colleyville. Very usual tactic in the first inning. You saw a pinch runner the first batter. It's very unusual, but let's be doing something right. They're currently leading 8 2. Gets one foul for the first strike. Update Matt Chavitt has hit a two run home run. We cut the lead from 10 is 10 7. Astros and Blue Jays. Takes one there for a strike to make our count here 0 and 2. Number 14, Brock Zimmer. If there's anything Toronto Blue Jays can do it is come back in games. They've done it very many times this year. Never say die, and that one goes flying. That one actually might have hit a car. Uh, it's quite possible. That one dented a windshield. That one goes high out to the left field. And Lefter makes the catch at the wall. And the runner goes back to first. 
and that is our first out of the inning. One of my biggest problems as a baseball player was depth perception, and it still stands. Especially he's trying to see depth through a, a uh, screen. But we appreciate the screen being there. He takes one outside for ball one. Pops one up high, and the first baseman is, oh, drops it. And the throw to second is off. The runners will advance. A bobbled pop fly will cause a runner to get on base. Or... Maybe not. We're having a rules can thing here. They're asking for clarification on it does. Look like the runner Bob the First baseman bobbled the pop up. Oh, nonetheless, we have one out here. Top of the six. Colleyville leads Birdville eight to two. One pitch. Call in for a strike. One and two. Stay right there. Pitch. And swing and a miss. Goes to the. And tags out the runner. Good defensive catching there. And that will end the inning. And half inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Colleyville still up by six. We're watching Birdville Boys Baseball on the Vibe Media Network.
And we are back here at the bottom of the six. Chance. Takes one outside, ball one. Better Grant Pert. Takes another one inside for ball number two. And that wind is kicking up. It's starting to feel it here. Takes ball three. We see Grant Pert in this position here before. does look like there's a new pitcher in for, uh, wasn't announced, but in for Colleyville. Number one, Will Rasmussen in the pitch for Colleyville. And he'll take that fourth ball for to get on base here. Definitely, uh, not endearing himself in the game, especially how well we have seen Cooper Powell and his five strikeouts through five innings. But now letting it up to bat. For the Hawks is number six, Vida Martinez. We'll see if Rasmussen is able to find his control here. Oh, he finds a foul. Baseball's finding their way to the parking lot on the other side of the stadium. The 0 1 pitch. Melvin's gonna come up, but that's gonna find us! Nice pop foul made its way into. First base side of the bleachers. Another person gets to go home with a souvenir. Was a screamer at least, but the audience was at least clued up. You never, you always want to keep your eyes on the game. Martinez launches one right to the left fielder. Hey, the wind certainly had to contribute to that. It's certainly hard hitting into this wind. It is really kicking up a storm here. But the breeze feels so nice. That brings up number 18, Nico Ianu. Launches one for one. Oh, but he got him out. Definitely gonna challenge that because his foot was not on that bag when he caught that ball. Nope, they weren't coming out to challenge that. They were. I don't know if you can challenge, but. <laughs> not exactly the song you want to have playing in a high school baseball game, but you know, I'll let him have it. They're living their best life as he takes this pitch high for ball one. Yes. 
I was listening to Kanye West when I was in high school, so I can't fault him for that. Even a censored version, it's you know what they're saying. As he fires another one outside for ball two. We are three outs away from a no hitter in a or combined no hitter, I should say. It's not real no hitter. Fouls went back. Freezer counts two and one. I return to Aiden Freeman. Two outs. A runner on. Rasmussen deals. And grounds into the third baseman. The third baseman bobbles the ball, and that will allow the runner to get there. The shortstop. I thought I thought I saw the third baseman go to that point. It was the third baseman. Okay, I'm not crazy. They had switched positions. The third third baseman and the shortstop had switched positions. Two out, two on. Number three, Mason Siegmund. That's fairly enter the game. I guess it, and that will end the inning. Ryder, the shortstop, able to make the play. And that is it for the city. Can they pull anything together in the seventh inning? Or this day at 8 2 ball game. You're watching Birdville Boys ba Baseball on the Vite Media Network. And you're back here at the top of the, of the seventh inning here, Birdville. Throws one high for ball one. Caleb Ward still in the game. Cameron Ward, excuse me. Caleb Ward was the first time went to college with. Grounds one right down the middle. No one was there to get it. And Trent Bauer will get safely on base. I love it. Ethan Gerd is up to bat for Colleyville. Throws one in for a strike from Cameron Ward. <sighs> Throws the first, and he is safe. 
Good heads up play by the catcher. pitch and fires one outside and low ball two fires another one outside ball three Because coming into the game in the top of the second inning, top of the second inning, uh, he's only given up two runs. And that's a remarkable job of keeping holding runners. And not giving up hits. One can only think of that for the performance of, of our, uh, our leadoff. Well, our starting pitcher, I should say, then we uh, might have a completely different ball game here. But you only deal with what you've gotten. And right now, they call the hitters. Panthers lead the Birdville Hawks eight to two. Fires one outside for ball four. No, do we, do we mess it up? Ball three. Ball three. Oh, it's a 3-2 count. Ah, my scoreboard was messing up here. 3-2 count. But that one definitely was ball four. And the runner will get on base. Two on, no out. Brings up number 17, Josh Statton. He's had himself a day here. Two hits. Two RBIs. Shows bunt, but fires outside anyway for ball one. Getting himself in some trouble here. Top of the seventh. Managed to fire that one in for a strike, even if we're counting here. One and one. Or it shows butt again. Still fires in for a strike. Solid baseball mind is to show the buttons. Especially when they go into that windup. Pops one right out of the shortstop. And we will hold runners. First out of the inning here. For Cameron Ward. Pitch and fires in for a strike. First pitch strike. Keep everything up through here. Fires the second pitch strike. Got him looking. Really paid the edges of that strike zone. That fastball. <laughs> and got him swinging for the strikeout. Been a very 
impressive pitcher since he came into the game here today. It's two outs here, top of the seventh inning. Got himself a little bit of a jam, but it's working out. But a first pitch swing strike. Made him look foolish. Good bit of movement on that pitch. Fires one inside for a strike. Just at the zone. Right there. And the punch out will end the inning. Number seven, West Ballard strikes out. And that'll be it for our game here, guys. Uh, I thought they were coming out and shake hands. Never mind. Everybody exited the dugout at once. I, I was very confused by that. We still have... Oh, yes, we have a new pitcher coming out here, it looks like, for the... Uh, Colleyville. Uh, Zach Fleet. All right, and we return to the bottom of the seventh. The game is not over yet. Hawks still high behind by six. Out shoulder of the bat. Number thirteen, new pitcher Zach Fleet, in the play for all for Colleyville. First pitch hangs foul. Shoulder gets back in the box. Fires a f one in there for a ball. In there. Pitch. Rounds one to the shortstop. Will he make the play in time? And he makes it for the first out. Far more appropriate Kanye West song, Flashing Lights. I don't know why a Kanye West playlist is, uh, goes right off the bat, and the center fielder is there for it to make the catch. Three pitches 
two outs for Zach Fleet. Colleyville Heritage Panthers pitcher. Ben Brooks at the plate here for Birdville. Pitch. Fires it in for a strike. Takes with it for a ball. Even the count at one and one. Gravitas. He shows that at the plate. Fouls one back. Right over the look. The away dugout. Fires one outside. Did you count on the batter Ben Brooks? Chopper foul right into the away dugout. Two two pitch. Lines one right and it falls down for a base hit into left field. Exactly who you want right now. Number seven, Will Bush, the best batter team up to the plate. We've seen his approach here tonight. His unique batting stance. We have a lefty and righty matchup. Fires one inside. Fires one outside. It gets escapes. Allows for the. Uh, runner to advance. We do have a runner in scoring position here for the Birdville Hawks. Zach Fleet cruising through two, but fires one just barely outside for ball two. Launches one into the air. It's a nice gap, and the wind will keep it there. And that is it. That is our ball game here, ladies and gentlemen. Colleyville Heritage. Our final score is Colleyville Heritage eight. Burville Hawks two. Thank you so much, everybody. My name is Wesley Moon, and for all of us here at Vite Media, thank you so much. And have a good evening. Drive safely.